This is the Millikan oil drop experiment. So the idea was a way to measure the fundamental charge, the charge of an electron. And Millikan did this a long time ago, and here's what he did. He took a tiny, 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 tiny drop of oil, and he squirted it into two plates with uh, opposite charges. These charges made an electric field. So when the drop got squirted, it was possible that it could accumulate an extra electron or two electrons or three electrons, but let's assume it, it gets one extra electron. One extra electron. So now there's an electric force on that, and there's also a gravitational force. If he adjusted the amount of charge on the plate, you could change that electric field. It's not too hard to do. You could adjust it such that the drop just stays there. Once it stays there, you can use the size of the drop to calculate the charge on the drop. So, but let's work this problem backwards. Let's say that we know the charge of an electron, and this drop has one extra electron on it. So the question number one is, what's the, the weight of the oil drop, and what's the value of the electric field? So that's the question. In, in this case, we're given the radius of the drop, we can assume it's a sphere of radius one micrometer, and it has a density of 920 kilograms per cubic meter. Really? You can't measure that. So what Millikan did was to turn off the electric field and watch the oil drop fall. And it turns out that it would fall and the air resistance would give it a terminal velocity. And if you know some things about the shape of the drop and air resistance, stuff like that, you can actually determine the size of the drop that way. Well, in this case, it's just a physics problem, so we're going to do it this way. Okay, so we have, let me write up here uh, some of my things. I know that the radius is one micrometer. I know the density is 920 kilograms per cubic meter. I want to find the weight. I want to find the value of the electric field. So let's do it. So the first thing to do is to find the weight. This is not really a physics, second semester physics problem. This is just a, this is just a problem, right? So imagine I have a, a sphere, it has a radius, and it has, I want to find the mass. So mass uh, is, remember, the density is defined as mass over volume. So the mass would be the density times the volume. Now, what's the volume of a sphere? Maybe you forgot. That's fine. You can look it up. The volume of a sphere is 4 thirds pi r cubed. So I can find the volume. I can find the mass. Once I do that, I can find the weight. The weight of the drop is just the mass times g. So where g is the gravitational field, g 9.8 newtons per kilogram. So this is going to be equal to the mass. I'm sorry. Let me put in, for the mass, put in all this stuff. So it's going to be the density times the volume, 4 thirds pi r cubed times g. Uh, let's just go ahead and calculate that as a number. So the weight is going to be the density, 920 times 4 thirds times pi times the radius. Now, I do have the density in kilograms per cubic meter. So that means that my volume needs to be in cubic meters. That means my radius needs to be in meters. One micrometer, the micro, the mu, that's the Greek letter mu, uh, is 10 to the negative 6 meters. So this would be 1 times 10 to the negative 6 meters cubed. And then I have to multiply it by, am I running out of room? I did run out of room. 9.8. Okay, you can see it in there. Okay, so let's calculate this. This is a great opportunity for you to practice using your calculator because you're going to make a mistake if you're not careful. Trust me, I see it all the time. I'm using my calculator, which is RPN notation, so it's a little bit different than yours, uh, but that's fine. So let's go 920. And then I need to multiply by 4, divide by 3, multiply by pi. And then I need to do this part. So I'm going to do 1 times 10 to the negative 6. I'm going to enter into the scientific notation. 1, negative 6. And now I'm going to cube it. So that's going to say enter, 3, cubed. Now I'm going to multiply by the rest of the stuff. And now I'm going to multiply by 9.8. And I get the weight of 3 
0.77 times 10 to the negative 14 newtons. Again, it's not really an electric field question for the first part, but we do need that value. I'm going to put it over here. Weight 3.77 times 10 to the negative 14 newtons. Okay, now the question is, if I get that drop to just balance and hover, what is the value of the electric field? So here's my drop. I know I have the downward gravitational force. I'll write that as the weight. And then the upward uh, electric force, Fe, which would be Q times E. Remember, the electric force is the electric field times the charge you put in the field. So in this case, the charge Q, it, oh, that's G. Q is E, which is 1.6 times 10 to the negative 19 coulombs. You don't need to memorize that. I just memorize it because I've done it for like 30 years and you memorize it after a while. So uh, that's that. So I know the charge. I want to find the mat. Now, I, these are vectors. That one's pushing up and that one's pushing down, but they're in one dimension up and down. So I do know that the magnitude of this has to equal the magnitude of that. So I'll write this as E, E equals W. I know the weight already, so I want to find the value of the electric field. E would be the weight over the electric charge. So let's put in our numbers here. 3.77 times 10 to the negative 14th divided by 1.6 times 10 to the negative 19th. Calculator time. I got to write, I got to stand. Oh, I dropped my chalker. I got to stand this way. Um, okay, so I already have that in there. I just need to divide by 1.6 times 10 to the negative, oops, 19 divided by. And I get an electric field magnitude of 2.36 times 10 to the 2, 4, 5. 5 newtons per coulomb. So that's the electric field. Um, and like I said, what he did, what Millikan did was to determine the electric field based on the charges and from that find the, the value of the charge on the, on the drop. And the cool part was that he found charges that had a value of 1 electric and then 2 and then 3, but never 1.5 never 0.389. It was always an integer number of the same charge, and that's how he found the fundamental charge, the charge of an electron. That's how he got that number.